Hallelujah. We are continuing with our conversation on divine connections. And today we are discussing, we are talking, we are believing for angelic divine connections. Hallelujah. So in the morning that angels are ready and available to help, to help, to help those who will inherit salvation. Do you know you are the one who will inherit salvation? Do you know that you are the ones who are being saved, who have been saved? They are not talking about some stranger from China. They are talking about you, believers. Hallelujah. Me, a believer. Praise the Lord. So, angels are on my side. Angels are on my side. Angels are not present only when we sing the song, We are standing on holy ground, and I know there are angels all around. Angels don't leave when you leave church. Angels go with you. They continue to serve you at your service. They are present to serve you. And while they are with you, angels can do at least five things I can find in the Bible that angels did. And I want us to talk about those five things. Five things that angels do when they are around us. The first one is that angels meet physical needs, literal physical needs. Angels meet physical. They come to meet physical. And out of this discussion on angels, I, I pray, Lord, that each one of us at some point in our lives, as we are talking about angelic connection, I pray that each one of us will have an angelic encounter. Yeah. It will not be the same ever again. I pray that we will have a, some kind of angelic encounter where we know that undoubtedly this was an angel of the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise God. So I pray for an angelic encounter. The first thing that angels can do and will continue to do in the lives of men is to meet physical needs because they are here to serve you. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible says that the devil went away from Jesus and angels came and took care of Jesus. Hey. The devil tempted Jesus several times and Jesus defeated him on all those times. Then now, the angel angels, angels responded, came to Jesus and took care of him after spending 40 days and 40 nights without food. What do you think they were doing? They are probably washing his feet. They are probably giving him something to drink something to eat you're giving you know they came and served jesus and ministered to him and took care of him and bathed him and made him look neat angels can do that angels can do that the same story is told in mark chapter 1 verse 13. now in both cases the greek word for that served him ministered him is Diconos, which we talked about in the morning. Okay? He, they gave spiritual, they gave physical, physical support, physical care to Jesus. In Genesis chapter 21, verse 17 and 19, the story starts with Hagar becoming pregnant by Abraham and despising uh, Sarah, Mr., uh, uh, her boss, and then Sarah saying, uh, Abraham, get rid of that girl. Get rid of that girl. Sometimes when you upset uh, the, the woman of the house, she can tell the boss to get rid of you. So you need to measure your, your, how far you can go. It doesn't matter what rights you think you have acquired. You can actually get booted quickly. Anyway, this girl, got, they end up in the desert and, and let's see um, uh, verse 17, Genesis 27. 21, verse 17 and 19. But he, of course, she ran, she was sent away without food, without what. So she was distressed. Her baby was hungry. The baby was crying. And she put the baby somewhere and she went at a distance and let the baby die when I'm not seeing. But God heard the boy crying. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven, saying, Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water container and gave the boy to drink. 
God provided water for Hagar Ishmael. Literally, by creating a well, by sending angels to create a well, and you know, you people, you don't know a desert. Some of us are so confused about when you talk about the desert, you, you can't fathom it. When you see a desert, it's miles of sand, miles and miles of sand and heat. No shade, nothing. If you like to find a shade, it's um, it's um, acacia tree which has barely any leaves, so it's still very hot. It was very, very difficult to watch the baby die, but God created a well and water and, you know, by sending angels to provide physically for them. Amen. The other place actually was in, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 5. Elijah, having feared the wrath of Jezebel, after calling fire from heaven, he feared a, a, a woman, and he ran for his life. Because she said, may the gods do unto me as you've done those prophets. Because he knew what he had done by this time tomorrow. So he ran. Now the angel of the Lord came to him. The Bible says in verse 5, 19.5, Then he laid down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. Wow. And he looked around, and there beside his head, was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and laid down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him. He said, get up, eat some more. All the journey ahead of you will be too much, too much for you. An angel is providing food and drink for the prophet who is hungry, tired, and scared. So angels can provide physical things. We have to task them. Say, look, I need intervention in a physical manner. Intervene on my behalf. Number two, angels can give strength. In Luke chapter 22, verse 43, Jesus had been praying in the garden of Gethsemane. He had exhausted himself and didn't have any energy. But there was other things coming which needed strength. The Bible says, Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. Gee, the angel came from heaven and delivered strength. The Greek word for that kind of strength is eniscium. You know, it's a compound word. It comes from two words, any, in. Skill, which comes, which means strength. You write down my Greek words because I'm going to ask for them by the end of the seminar. And this skill is strength in giving some, putting someone in. So he came and strengthened him. The Lord delivered strength. Same thing with Daniel chapter 10, verse 18 and verse 19. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me gave me strength and said, do not be afraid. You are highly esteemed. Peace, he said, peace, be strong now, be strong. Then he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak my Lord, since you have given me strength. Some of you don't know that it takes strength for you to hear the voice of the Lord. Angels can provide the strength you need to hear the voice of the Lord. Jesus said, ye have not, actually, James, ye have not, because he has not. If you were to ask for strength to hear the voice of the Lord, angels can be deployed to give you strength to hear the voice of the Lord. It, it's not impossible. It's been done before. God is no respecter of persons. Have you asked for strength to be able to hear the voice of the Lord? But sometimes the voice of the Lord is mighty and terrible. It makes the mountain to skip. Next, A. Hey. So, angels can give strength for you to be able to hear the voice of God. We saw Daniel. So, are you feeling in need of strength? Just ask. Angels can also give, number three, angels can give supernatural guidance. When God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, 
an angel appeared to Abraham. But also an angel was said, after Abraham prayed, Abraham, Abraham pleaded with God. If there are five, if there are 20 people, if there are 50 people, wouldn't this reason? God, I'm not there are 50 people. He said, but if they are 10, he said, and they are not destroyed until there was found none. But Lot lived in that city with his family. So the Lord said, well, I will save Lot. And he sent angels to come down to Lot. The whole of, the whole of, uh, the whole of, uh, of, of that chapter, I think it is 22, Genesis. He, he goes through a whole long back and forth. At some point, angels had to really carry, reach a Lot against him because they were trying to feet. He had, he had to carry them and guide them out of the city for it to be destroyed. They give instructions on what not to do. Of course, Lord's wife didn't listen and she became a pillar of salt. In Judges chapter 6, verse 11, we see, we see the angels coming to Gideon and saying to him, the angel of the Lord, in verse 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the abyss right where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When you have to thresh wheat in a wine press, circumstances have become very complicated. You know? Yeah. A wine press is where they make wine. They take their matoke, they take their uh, where they make wine from. And they, and they press, you know? press they take their what well, they make wine from somebody help they make wine from uh, grapes yes they take their grapes thank you thank you rebecca they make they make they, they press them the juice comes out they sieve they do it a very complicated process it's not where you take wheat which is dry thresh it but they have not had a lot of grapes in a long time and the wine press was dry so the man was like, wanted a place to hide this usually was like a pit, so he went there, took his wheat there, you know, trying to save himself and his family. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Then the angel of the Lord, sorry, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty man of mighty, mighty man of valor. They said, Pardon me, my Lord. If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? Some of us can be in situations which where we are hiding, where we are we, we are we are escaping the media lights. We need the angel not to come and say, Mighty man of Father. And then you have to ask him, Where is the Lord? Where has he abandoned us? If you're ever in a situation where you feel like where is the Lord in this situation, then it's a good time for you to ask God to deploy angels for supernatural guidance. Amen. Angels provide supernatural guidance. And actually, they guided him up to the point where he defeated the Midianites. Gideon. Amen. So, in crisis situations, you don't know what to do. I've got a bad diagnosis. Show me what I did. When my wife was diagnosed with. When they told us that there was an. through the whole treatment period. The first thing he told us, this is not unto death. So in my heart, she got the word, she told me. I knew she didn't have to believe it. It was me to believe it for her. And I, I said, you told us that she's not going to die from this thing. So when she was almost convulsing, when she was having pain like up the sky, I kept saying, it is not unto death. It is not unto death. The thing the Lord told us that it's going to heal her. But it's going to take the disease away, slowly by slowly, one bit at a time. Hey, so this is a miracle already, but it is not the kind of miracle that is going to happen suddenly. So, but it's a miracle without God. So we're going to walk this miracle up to the end, step by step. And we took that word and we believed it. We got supernatural guidance. How do we go about this thing? He, he he told us he told us where to go for treatment. 
who to ask, who to talk to. We were late. We are still here. Hallelujah. Yeah. You need an angel from the Lord to give you supernatural guidance to overcome the battles that the enemy puts in front of you. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Remember, ye have not because ye ask not. Ask that your journey be complete. I need someone to spend some time to make it a personal mission to ask God to deploy angels on my behalf. To deploy angels on my behalf. Deploy, my God, deploy. That's why some of you speak in tongues. Don't waste time. Just go speak in tongues. I can be driving and all of a sudden I'm like, love the place, the God. Make it here. In Jesus' name, and angels are getting activated on my behalf. Number four, angels provide protection and deliverance. Psalm 34, verse 7 says, But the angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear the Lord to deliver them. The angels of the Lord make a barracks. Look, it's saying angels, capital, make a encampment, a garrison. They, 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 they bring tents and they bring swords and guns and they pitch tents around those who fear the Lord. When I said you have angels around you in the morning, you thought I was joking. That said the Lord, the angel of the Lord, the angels of the Lord, encamp around those who fear the Lord to deliver them. They're not just there to pose for a selfie. They are there with one mission to deliver me, to deliver you. So, if you are not delivered, tell the angels, boys, get to work. I need to be delivered. I know you're there. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord encamped around the righteous, around them, around about them that fear the Lord, and he delivereth them. Hallelujah. I have an encampment of angels. In Psalm 91, verse 11, the Bible says, the Lord promises that he will give his angels charge. I told you charge yesterday. Charge means responsibility. He will give them charge. Charge means he, 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 he will tell them, this is your duty. He will give them charge over his people. And he will keep them in all their ways. Every way you will take, the Lord will give charge. Psalm 91 verse 11. These verses should be close to you. They should be close to your heart. They should be close to your mouth. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In other words, to protect you in all your ways. In other words, to, to watch over you. Do you wonder why you sleep and cockroaches don't enter your mouth? Do you, you think cockroaches fear you? You think they cockroaches? You think they fear you? <laughs> we used to have a car and cockroaches entered the car. You sit in the car and the cockroaches will climb over and start biting you. So one day, a friend of mine who used to work for one of the national television, a very popular person, uh, said, you give me a lift. I knew I had cockroaches in the car. I, I, I said, okay, I, I can give you a lift, but in case some things start climbing, you please have some funny things. My God, my God. So, one day the Lord, I think I the angel of the Lord visited me and showed me a solution for cockroaches. So if you have cockroaches in your car, please inbox me or, or, or Pastor Becky. We can give you a solution which will remove all those evil things from your car. Cockroaches don't fear you. When you sleep, they can go in your mouth. You can be a national television anchor and they will still climb over you and they will bite you. They don't care. Why do you see the right your mouth when you are sleeping at night? The angel of the Lord encamps around you to stop them from going in your mouth. Some of you don't know when you sleep, your mouth opens, your nose opens. My God. But the angel of the Lord surrounds you. It comes around you 
He gives charge to keep you, to watch over you, to protect you. In Acts chapter 5, verse 17 and 20, when they had arrested Peter, you know, Peter, they had put him in prison because James had, the brother of John had been killed by decapitation. And this man realized that hey, this action I've taken is very popular with the people. So he also had, I think that's Acts chapter 4, 5. No, that's chapter 12, Acts 12. You know, but in Acts chapter 5, 17, the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth out, you know, and put them back in the temple and made them to preach again. People who were arrested there were like, didn't you participate in prison yesterday? So you can be in prison and they will send angels and they will get you out. But Acts 12, um, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's where Peter was arrested and, uh, and, and was put in prison. And he was supposed to be beheaded just in order to score some votes with the people, you know? You know? And Peter kept in prison and the people prayed. So you see, prayer deploys angels. The people prayed and God heard them. You know, verse 6, the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And then there were two sentries stood outside the, the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter in the side saying, Chale, 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 quick, get up, get up, get up. And the chains which were binding Peter fell off his wrist. And the angel said, put on your clothes. The man was even naked. I said, put on your sandals. And put the sandals. And Peter did so. And wrap your cloak around you and follow me. The angel literally broke the chains. When you see them, man descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and he sat upon it. These guys had put a stone so big, even the disciples and the, and the women were saying, but the stone is so big, who is going to roll it for us? It was inhuman to think of rolling. You needed one of these big earth movers maybe to move the stone. But there came one angel and he just pushed the stone off the grave of the mouth of the grave of Jesus and sat on it. He, he, he basically ridiculed the storm. What everybody thought was such a complicated thing. The angel came and made it look so simple. He sat on it. You know, when you sit on something, you have really sat on it. You have defeated it. He, he, as if to show that, come on, what's the big deal? There is an angel somewhere who is going to come to you and do something that you're going to say, and even you, you're going to say, what was the big deal again? Something beyond human comprehension, supernatural. So angels can do superhuman things. You, if you find a superhuman feat, something that cannot be done by human beings, angels can still do it. Because they are powerful. They are very powerful. Angels are very powerful. Let me show you that they are powerful. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 and 3, John writes, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold of that dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, and he bound him a thousand years and cast him in the bottomless pit. Wow! There is an angel who can bind Satan? That great devil, that devil of that ancient serpent, he can bind him and throw him in the bottomless pit. That's a serious angel. I want that angel on my side. In fact, that angel is on my side. Yes. And he set a thing upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should pass. Eh? After that, he must be loosed for a little season and he shall be banned again. Hey! So if I find a demon that becomes stubborn, I can tell angels, boys, 
Get that girl and tie him up so firmly he cannot speak. He cannot even breathe. Tie him so hard. You understand what I'm talking about? So these things of seeing someone who's demon possessed and you start freaking out. What are you doing? What are you doing? You have an angel powerful enough to bind that devil in chains and you're freaking out on a demon? A mere demon? chapter 26 verse 53 when they came to attack Jesus this is what he told them he said stop stop doing what you're doing he said do you not think I can ask my father and he at once put at my disposal more than 20 legions of angels let me tell you do you not think that you can ask our father in heaven and he deploys for you 12 legions there's angels and then there's legions of angels. There's angels and then there is legions. And this is one of ten super power, dynamic, following style of angelic intervention. Jesus said that is available by just me asking. We have angels working mighty works on our behalf up to 12 legions let me tell you a legion was 600 600 times 12 do the math do the math a legion 600 times 12 that's in excess of somebody help me with the math 600 times 12 that is tens of thousands of angels deployable for one person. Yeah. Who has the math right? 72,000 or 7,200? One of the above. 7,200, right? All for you. And that can be 7,200 for you, 7,200 for your wife, 7,200 for your children. So in your own household, you could have 100,000 angels. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for angels. Thank you that at mere asking, angels are deployable on our behalf. I pray that angels will be deployed on the behalf of every Akaruma today in the name of Jesus to respond to whatever little thing or whatever great thing is confronting them. Not just to respond to it, but for some, the angels should bind with great chains and throw into the bottomless pit and put a seal on it. Some things that are being bound right now will never come back again to harm you. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, because I, when I pray, you answer me. When I pray, you hear me and you answer me. And I thank you that you have answered me. The angels are deployed to the rescue of all your servants. 